<coughs> oh, sorry about that. How you doing, folks? Papa Joe here. I am uh, sitting up here in Boiser City, Louisiana. It's Sunday night. I am normally at home on Sunday night. Not tonight. Put the window down a little bit. All right, that kicked back on. Okay. Uh, a little bad planning on some folks' part. Not on mine. I'm innocent. The uh, week last week went a little bit rough. Somebody wasn't really thinking that hard about the consequences. They uh, had me go deliver a load when I was supposed to be getting my truck worked on or when I should have been getting my truck worked on. I think I told you about it. So uh, that left me where I had to do a Dallas run or else sit around forever. So I did the Dallas run. Couldn't get back to the yard in time to get anything done Thursday. So uh, I had to lay over for the night and I had to work on my truck Friday morning. Now I was told that folks were going to come in at 7 o'clock an hour early to start on my truck. And that didn't happen. Now, the shop foreman, Jonathan, he did come in pretty much at his regular time because he comes in early anyway to get a lay of the land for the day, see what he's dealing with. So, uh, uh, he did do that kind of quick, and he started, he pulled me in and started tearing my rear axle apart about 7.30. So, he had it tore apart when the other guys come in, and JT got on it, and he started swapping out the brakes back there, and Jonathan did other stuff. And they actually had me rolling, well, out of the shop just a few minutes before 9, which was pretty fast. That was hustling. So I can't throw no rocks at them. And, of course, the company don't want overtime any more than necessary, so I understand why they didn't come in. And one of them was said, I'm... I wasn't told to come in early. Gee, imagine that. I was told something that ain't true. What truck driver's ever had that happen before? I bet I'm the only one. But uh, they put a hustle on. And they got me. I was rolling just a very few minutes after 9 o'clock. But I had over 400 miles to do. To try to get down to here by fourish. I have two drops here in this area. This one's the first one, then there's another one over yonder about five miles away. Uh, matter of fact, let me make sure that this did its job. Yes, it did. So about five miles away is where my second drop is. Uh, I got here about ten after four. They quit receiving at five. Well, when I got here Friday, 10 after four, uh, it was going to be real tight kicking this off here, making the five miles by five o'clock there and kicking those off. Well, when I get here, the guy that normally receives took the day off. And the fellers up front that was going to have to deal with me, they're like, man, that place is a packed out back there. I don't know where in the world we're going to put it. So after they hemmed hauled around a while, they told me I needed to come back Monday. So I called my people. And uh, she called the shippers to get it make sure uh, everything is how it should be so we get paid. I'm 180 miles from my house. 
So Friday, instead of getting unloaded here at these two drops, and I still have three in Houston, I deadheaded home 180 miles, and I couldn't get a hold of my dispatcher Friday night. He turned his phone off. That kind of aggravates me. So I called the general manager, and she's the one that dealt with stuff, and uh, and that is protocol at our company. So it ain't like I was jumping the chain of command or any of that stuff. If you can't get a hold of your dispatcher, you call her. And she's the one that dealt with it. So I had to drive 180 miles home Friday. And I told her that I'd leave my house. Normally I don't leave my house till 8 o'clock Monday morning. I don't start rolling until 8 o'clock. More or less. Give or take a little bit on each side. So uh, I told her, I said, well, I'll head out about 6 a.m. And it's... 180 miles, I'll get up there 8 30 ish. I decided today that I didn't want to leave out, get up at any 5 o'clock in the morning to come up here. So, uh, me and Grandma's old enough, we've been married long enough that it didn't bother her for me to pull on out. It didn't bother me a whole lot. We both know it'll make it easier on me in the long run. So, uh, I'm wondering if this is somebody trying to get in here. I can't know. Uh, we're damn sure pulling in here. Let me pause y'all a minute. All right, I'm back with you. That's a dragon wagon over there. Brought in a tanker yanker. He broke a serpentine belt and the whole truck just shuts down. So he has to get a dragon wagon to bring him in here. I'm at one of the truck places where I'm delivering at. Uh, kind of lost track where I was at on my story. But anyhow, with some bad planning, I went ahead and I had to come back up here another 180 miles back up. I was doing my uh, math and whatnot, and I decided I didn't want to get up no 5 o'clock in the morning to try to make it up here by 8-ish. And I need to be kicking this off here when they open up so that uh, I can be trying to get to Houston. I don't see it working. The math ain't there. The hours ain't there. But I left my house on a Sunday evening at 6 o'clock. So I'm doing my part. I'm trying to uh, make it happen. I just don't see it happening. Uh, I can't roll until... Well, let's see. I've been here 44 minutes. And it's... I can't roll until about 8 o'clock. Quarter to 8 in the morning. Which works out fine. My 10 hours will be up. About the time I'm getting this kicked off here. Uh, it took me all but three hours tonight to drive up here. And I stopped and got a truck wash too. The owner seen my truck the other day and he wasn't real happy with me. When you get a truck wash last year, oh, I don't know, two or three weeks ago. I think nasty. Get a truck wash. Yes, sir. No. So, and I didn't take it, he was joking. We joking kid around a lot. He wasn't joking. And his truck was dirty and he didn't like that. He liked his equipment looking good. I'd been running hard and all the bugs and the rain and the nonsense and you know how it goes. But uh, I don't see how I could have done anything differently on all this. It took almost three hours to get up here tonight without any traffic. And I have to turn around and go back to Houston, which is going to be 180, almost 250 miles. So, uh, well, I can tell you how far it's going to be from the second to the third modern technology. 256 miles from when I kick that second one off here in the morning and make my first one in Houston. So, uh, 
I've got all but 300 miles to do and one, two, three, four, five, five drops to make. And supposed to pick up a load at two o'clock tomorrow afternoon. I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening at all. And it don't matter if it's electronic logs or not. This place don't open. They might start unloading me at 730. But they're not supposed to start unloading until 8 is what their hours are. But uh, he might take me a little bit early. Even if he does, I can't roll till quarter to nine or quarter to eight. So, uh, time I kick this off, say I'm out of here by eight o'clock. Get to the second one, kick that stuff off, eight thirty. And I got two hundred and fifty miles to get to the third one. I did don't say hey, it might happen, but I don't see it. I don't think so. I'll let you know later. Uh. Had the boys working both days this weekend. Had to do a little setup for a trailer that Michael got. Did that yesterday. And got the place mowed. Got my mower out of the shop. They delivered it Friday. Warning covered the problems on it. So other than the service, it needed to be serviced. We done ran it enough, it needed its first service. So, uh, put Robert on mowing, and he knocked out everything that needed to be mowed in less than five hours. Uh, he did the big part in about four hours, and then had to do inside the yard and make Mama happy. And yes, she is his mama, and he wants to make Mama happy. So, uh, had the other fella, Lakota, weed eating. He didn't get near as much done as I had hoped, and it wasn't because he was slacking. And uh, I have a battery-operated weed eater, and he would run it half hour, 45 minutes, have to charge the battery up, and go do something else. I might have to break down and get a gas weed eater. I really don't want to. I've never had any luck with gas weed eaters, but. Uh, this having to charge the battery and wait on it on as big as place as I got is not doing good at all. But I might have pulled the trigger on that. I'm trying not to. Uh, so then today Michael's trailer showed up. We had to build some pads to put it on for the uh, stabilizers to set on. So knocked that out before he got there. Then went back there and spotted it for him. Helped the guy that brought it in. So got it set up like it needs to be set up. Uh, let's see, then they took lunch, and now those of you that have looked at the tour of my property on the videos and stuff, and been keeping up with what I'm doing, you know I had a hundred stumps ground, and they've been working on them slowly because it's big old piles of mulch here, and we think that's what the hogs are coming in after, is the uh, grub worms and stuff in them. In that milling, they got out there and they did a lot of working today on uh, breaking down some of them hills and spreading them out some more. They ain't got nowhere near all of them. I mean, they've been doing them as they as we progress along and whatnot. So uh, I had them today to just concentrate on that this afternoon. And boy, does it make a world of difference on that back 40. So, uh, and I told them that's what they're going to do next weekend. They're taking next Saturday off and they're going to work Sunday. And which I'm fine with that. I already told them I'm getting tired of working seven days a week. So, 
which they understand that even though I'm not out there doing the physical work with them, I get out there and look and watch and plot and plan and make sure they're doing it the way I want it done and, and make sure we're not having any issues and constantly thinking about this stuff and what I need to do next. And, and uh, it really does get mentally and physically straining on me. So, uh, and they've worked both days all summer, you know, both days on the weekend all summer long. So I asked them, you know, I told them I was ready to slow down and pretty much work one day a weekend. They both agreed they're ready to slow down too. So, uh, <coughs> which we all know that there's going to be times that they wind up working two days a weekend, which is, they're fine with that too. But we're going to try to keep it down. Uh, let's see. I cannot... Oh, I know what we did. When I got home Friday night for dinner, Mama ran down to Taco Hell and uh, she picked up some Taco Hell for us. Then picked me up we went home and ate Taco Hell. It was getting a little bit late anyway. Uh, Saturday night, last night, we went down to that Texas Grill I was telling you about where we ate our anniversary dinner. It wasn't near as good. The service wasn't. I wasn't real happy. Uh, and I let the manager know in a nice, polite way. And because I just sang him all kinds of praises before. And I told him that Saturday night. I said, last week when we was here, I said, you couldn't have beat the service. I said, Food was great. Service was great. I couldn't complain at all. I said, this week you're kind of dropping the ball. They're like, well, what's up? Uh, well, we ordered your alligator again for an appetizer. He's like, right. I said, it was excellent last week. I said, this week it's so hard I can't eat it. Well, uh, I sent it back to the kitchen. They're like, well, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you are, but that gator was pretty damn sorry. I said, and not only that, I said, literally less than two minutes after my appetizer shows up, here's my main course. I said, I'm used to getting, when I order an appetizer, I want to have a little bit of time to eat my appetizer. And then the main course comes out five, ten minutes later type deal. Not two minutes. Uh, we ordered the buffalo burgers with fries. I said, as you can see, I'm almost done eating my buffalo burger. I said, the fries still ain't made it. He made everything right. Uh, they didn't charge me for the gator, needless to say. And they brought us out some uh, free of charge. And I said, put in a go dish, you know. So we took that home and I munched on that last night. Uh, and like I told him, I said, you know, I said, I'm not going to, uh, quit coming here yet. I've been here twice. And first time was some of the best service I've had in a while. I said, this time was just an off night. We all have off nights, you know, or off days, whatever. I said, that's what I'm going to write it up to. I said, we will be back. So, uh. Our main reason for going there Saturday night was when we had been down there last Monday. That was our anniversary. Uh, the waitress that we had and his manager said they had knew somebody that could come catch him hogs that's been coming in on my place. And she got busy and forgot to give me phone number. So me and Mama talked about it, and I like I want to try the buffalo burger anyway. And uh, while we're at it, we can just see if we can get that phone number, which I got a phone number to Uncle John. So I called Uncle John, and uh, 
left him a voicemail and I still ain't heard from him. I've had the damnedest luck here lately with people returning calls. I mean, I don't get it. But, uh, then, uh, Mama cooked up a, uh, a roast this evening, a beef, bunch of veggies with it, you know, celery, onions, carrots, taters. And, uh, I wasn't really hungry when I went to leave the house, but I brought me out several little dishes of it, so I'll be eating that this week. We haven't been cooking there as much, and I don't know. Well, yeah, I do know why. I'm just tired. So, uh, which is part of why I hope we, uh, I hope to start cooking more once we slow down on the stuff that I'm trying to do around the house. So, but here I sit. Going to spend the night here. And we'll just see what tomorrow brings. Oh, huh. had some screwball comment on my one of my videos on the e-logs. And yes, I called him a screwball. He made some comment. And I wasn't sure if he was trying to be rude or what. And I asked him, please explain yourself before I reply. And uh, he come back telling me what a rookie I am. And, and uh, when I get 40 years under my belt, then I'll have a right to comment on trucking and e-logs. And he has 40 years under his belt. And he's done this, that, and something else. And, and just go ahead and make your reply. Okay. I did. I said, I got your number. You're one of these hate-filled trolls that's just out trying to create problems. And I don't waste my time on uh, and, and making comments on the industry that you don't know nothing about and ain't been in. Uh, and I don't waste my time on the likes of you. Enjoy your life. And that was the end of that. I don't understand people like that. So filled up with anger. I should. Back in my day, I was. Before God came into my life, I was a very angry individual. And that seems so long ago, and it hasn't really been. The uh, Lord's been in my life 10 years, more or less now. Uh, actually, probably less than that. And it seems like a lifetime ago that I was dealing with all the anger and stuff. Uh, thank you, Lord. I'm a lot better now. Enjoy life a lot better. Enjoy people better. But it is what it is. Well, there you go. This done stretched out to almost 25 minutes. Didn't plan on it being that long. Y'all remember, God loves you, and so do I. Don't be angry. Anger just burns you up from the inside out. Don't be angry. Figure out what your problem is. Bring the Lord into your life. Calm down. Be mellow. It'll help you a lot. Y'all have a blessed evening now. Good night.